get your Bibles out. Uh, since it's Pentecost, we'll be going to Acts chapter 2, maybe another place or two, like Proverbs 8. But we're going to uh, ask you a question. I know how everybody in this building is going to answer uh, this question. I know everybody. Now, those that are watching, I don't know about, because I don't know who's watching. But I will tell you, everybody in this building will answer this question in the same way. I think Susan and I will answer it. Amen? Is the Holy Spirit an asset or a liability to the church? Okay. Of course, you, you would say asset. he's an asset, right? An absolute asset, so much so that we can't do without him. So he's not just, we will not reduce the Holy Spirit to an asset. We will call him a necessity. Amen. A necessity. Yes. Amen? Amen. And we need the Holy Spirit to make it through these last days. I'll show you the verses that Peter preaches on that, that show us clearly that we need the Spirit of the living God to make it through this time and for the times even to manifest the way they do. We need the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I know this morning, as, as, as I was just sitting uh, in, in my office, and uh, wasn't feeling very well. And the Lord just told me, he said, well, just pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. And I said, okay. And I did that. And man, did I feel good after that. A lot better. So praise the Lord. There is power in his name. Amen. But I, I want to tell you that this morning there are a lot of people in the body of Christ that believe that the Holy Spirit is a liability. Mm -hmm. We've got to hide him somewhere. You know? It's like, go in the corner and don't act up, Holy Spirit. You stay over there. We'll take the service. We'll, we'll take the church. We'll take the church in the direction we want it to go. We'll manage this thing perfectly. Holy Spirit, you, go, you just go stand in the corner. Very disrespectful. I don't believe the Spirit of the Lord is going to tolerate that too long. Amen. He is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. But, <laughs> amen, he has his moments. <laughs> Praise God, and I know you all know that. Amen. So, um, amen. last Sunday, we talked about the church being in one accord, in one place, and the importance of the church being in one place. In other words, coming together. The Lord wants his church to come together. He doesn't want us all over, all over the planet. Yeah, that's okay for a period of time. But then the church has to come back together. We need to come together and pray, seek the face of God, and believe him. And when they begin to do that, and when they begin to worship, and they begin to cry out to him, like the scripture says, night and day, the Lord begins to open the heavens. Praise his name. Amen? Amen? There'll be an open heaven when God's people decide to come together, to be in one place, Amen. just like they were on the day of Pentecost. There was an open heaven over that place. The Holy Spirit was poured out. Tongues of fire rested upon each person's head. Amen? Which was, I believe is a picture of the tongue that God was going to put in their mouth. The tongue of fire that would burn through the chaff and the darkness that was in the world. Amen? Somebody say amen. I'm amen. Amen. excited. Praise God. Amen. So I went through the prologue of the book of Acts. Prologue is a fancy way to say introduction. Uh, and if that word's too big for you, it's just the beginning, okay? It's the beginning of the book and how Luke talks to Theophilus and says, Howdy, Theophilus, I'm going to write you a history of what Jesus began, began to do amen. and to say amongst his people. Amen. amen. That's an Acts chapter 1, 1 to 3, and then I went over what the Holy Spirit promised. And the promise that he made was contingent on, on a command that he gave to the disciples. Amen? And the command he gave to his disciples was to come together to wait for the move or for the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest and then to go into the world. That was his command. And if it was a command to his apostles, I believe it's a command to us today. Are you with me? Yes. A lot of people don't, but I do. Because if he told the, the apostles these things, and we believe some of it, we pick and choose what we believe, I don't think so. I don't think that's right. Amen? 
And then we talked about Jesus ascending into heaven in their sight where they saw him. And he told them, he said he was coming back in the same way they saw him go. In other words, we will see him when he returns. Praise God. His church will. As again, he opens up the heaven, but this time to return. Praise his name. And then, of course, the upper room prayer meeting where the Holy Spirit fell in that upper room. And the things that went on up there. And then, of course, uh, we're going to look in now to the uh, coming of the Holy Spirit. And uh, subsequently, the neglect of the Holy Spirit, which I forgot to tell you about, is in Hebrews chapter 2. And I believe this, spirit, this, this verse, Hebrews chapter 2, talks about how we can move over or drift over into neglecting the Holy Spirit and His work. And so I believe the writer of Hebrews gave us a warning here. He said, therefore, and I told you last week, therefore meant uh, that, he, that God was upholding everything by the word of his power. So that's what the therefore was there for. The, God, the word was important. And the word was going to be manifest in power. And there was a way that that was going to happen. The word will manifest in, in power when the Holy Spirit is present. Very important. Amen? He says we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard. And I'm going to show you another. Uh, Peter used that word heed in his Pentecost sermon, which was the first Pentecost sermon, by the way. And he talked about heeding and heeding the words. Very important. So we don't forget and we neglect what God has spoken to us and told us. He says so... We have to earnestly heed the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. And it's very easy to drift. Amen? Especially, uh, you know, in these days, it's very easy to drift. Susan and I just went to the beach about a month and a half ago. And it's, it's interesting how when you start to swim in the ocean and everything, you kind of you drift down the beach just a, a wee bit. And so you've got to have a fix. We in, when I grew up in New Jersey, I learned you got to have a fix on the beach so you know where you belong, and otherwise you'll you know you'll be three towns over before you know. It. And it's the same thing with the Word of God. Amen. You got to listen to it or you drift. Verse two: For the word spoken through angels proved steadfast. Ooh, I like that. And every transgression, as soon as they started to transgress. And every disobedience received a just reward. When you drift, there's trouble. Verse 3, how, here it is, how should we escape if we neglect? So great is salvation. How do you neglect your salvation? I'll tell you, the easiest way to neglect your salvation is to make this Holy Spirit of no effect whatsoever in your life. Amen? Amen. And so, beloved, we have a dilemma on our hands. Because I know we all don't believe that way, but I know we live in a, in a world, and we live especially in a church age, where they do minimize greatly the work of the Holy Spirit. And so I want, you to, I want you to see how important it is, because people will come back at you, especially in the body of Christ, and say, well, no, you're just, you just want emotion in your services. You just want... You know, you want the chill up your back. You want the giggles and the laughter. Well, you know what? Yeah. I like all that. <laughs> Amen? But I didn't ask for it. I just got it. Amen? So, uh, and i got to stop saying amen. I've caught myself yeah. saying amen too many times. Okay. I told Susan to throw something at me when I do that. Uh, so, how's, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. In other words, the apostles heard the command, they waited for the moving and the gift of the Holy Spirit, and when they received it, they moved out. Praise God. To the point where people looked at them, we're going to read it, and said to them, wow, these guys are, these guys are intoxicated. Well, they were intoxicated. It just wasn't with wine. They were so full of the Holy Spirit that it, it altered their, their behavior. Amen? And in a good way, not in a bad way. All right? Verse 4. So God bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit 
according to his own will. The importance of the Holy Spirit. We move forward in the future because of the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given unto us. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says this, No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So that's how I tie in salvation. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Well, that's just how easy it is. It says, except by the Holy Spirit. You minimize the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be negligent in your walk with God. Amen? Amen. I said it. Number one, the Holy Spirit is needed to heed God's word. We saw that word, right? Heed. Very important. The word heed means listen. But it, it's a deeper meaning than just listen and say, oh, okay, I heard it. It means you live it. You walk it out. You work it out. The Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Acts chapter 2, 14, it says, Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them, after the moving of the Holy Spirit in the upper room, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. There they are. Why did he, why did he stand up there and say, listen, I'm, I'm a fisherman, I'm a man of high education and great intelligence, and you need to listen to my word. No, he was a fisherman. They weren't of the highest intelligence or the highest of breeding, okay? But he says, my words are important. Why? Because the Lord himself by, through the power of the Holy Spirit, spoke to, them, to him through the, uh, through the words, through the word of God, and said these words, verse 15, for these are not drunk as you suppose, right? Because, number one, it was only nine o'clock in the morning, and they weren't like the coal miners in Gillette that get started, <laughs> you know, rather early, you know. I'm, I'm from New Jersey, and, and the... the uh, the bars and the liquor stores were not open round the clock like just about like they are here. Amen. But he looked at them and he says, Now you're 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 taking the easy way out. You're declaring that these men are drunk, so you can minif minimize what the Holy Spirit is doing in their life. But I want to tell you something different here. He says, It's only the third hour of the day. But he says, because he's talking to people that have been to church. He's talking to people that have been to synagogue. They opened those big scrolls in the synagogue and they read those words to the people every week. And he says, these men aren't drunk as you suppose. This was prophesied, verse 16. This was what was spoken by the prophet Joel that you heard in the synagogue weeks, uh, you know, not weeks after week, but many, many times in the synagogue. Joel spoke these words. And I want to read them to you. It's in my second point here. Because the Holy Spirit is needed for the last days to pass. Yes. Think about that mm -hmm. for a minute. Buckle your seatbelt. John's got a seatbelt on. He's got a, a belt that's a seatbelt. Anyway, it's funny. Uh, it says, and we're going to read it. It's just... It, uh, when I read this, I said, yes, yes, yes. Acts 2, 17. It shall come to pass in the last days. Now, he's quoting from Joel, the book of Joel, chapter 2. And Joel says, it comes to pass in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. When he said all flesh, it has to happen. Amen? Mm -hmm. God's people are going to have to have the Holy Spirit poured out upon them. All right? Very important for us to see that. I, what I was trying to do was read Peter's word and heed them. I was trying to apply that to my life. And so I want to heed what he's saying here. He says, listen, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Yeah. Amen. Listen, I stand on that right now. I'm not a prophesying son, I'm not a prophesying daughter. I believe my daughter prophesies without knowing about it, but, you know, they're, they're coming a day, man, when my son's going to prophesy. And if he's watching, there you go. 
he says, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Praise God. I find myself dreaming a lot more since I'm getting older. And on, your, on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in, the, in those days, and they shall prophesy. So God says in his word, my spirit, the pouring out of my spirit, shall come to pass in the last days. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It has to. Yeah. It has to, yes. And all those that are holding... <laughs> is it good? And all those that are holding back, are, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beloved, they're going to be coming in. Amen? We don't have enough chairs. We really don't. They're going to be coming in. And that's just not, not just wishful thinking. That, that's in the Word of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we're not even going to go anywhere where there's doubt. Amen? That's right. Holy Spirit is needed for the end of the age to come. Let me ask you a question. Who wouldn't want that? Except if you're living in sin. Except if you're living, you know, because of the works of your flesh. And that, those are what's getting you by. Who, who wouldn't want the move of the Holy Spirit? Who wouldn't want to draw closer to Jesus? Who wouldn't want to see the power of God manifest? Amen? I want to tell you, as a result of the preaching of this message, a, a result of them waiting in the upper room for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming upon them, and them preaching in power, Peter and John went to the temple. You know, how many of you remember that song from Sunday school? Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. He stuck out his palm, said, give me an all, and this is what they had to say. Anyway, you'll see what they have to say, so I don't have to sing the rest to you, okay? Um, wasn't that good? That's good. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay. So, as a result of the moving of the Holy Spirit and moving on the apostles, on the, on the disciples, amen, uh, I, they went to the temple, a lame man was healed in the temple because he put out his hand what he, what he thought he needed, amen? But the Holy Spirit has different ideas. Yes. That hit me, that just hit me. Holy Spirit has different ideas amen. for our world. Different ideas than they have right now. Different ideas than the pagan plans that they have. Amen? He has different plans. And he's going to exercise them. He's going to release them. He's going to release them through his maid servants and his men servants. They're going to see dreams and visions. They're going to prophesy. And God's going to pour out his spirit. It has to happen on all flesh. So that Peter and John went to the temple. They, they said, we, you know, he asked for, an, you know, he asked for money. And they said, well, we, we came to church a little short today in, in, the, in the purse. But what we do have, <laughs> because we've just been in upper room. We've just, been in, we've just been with the Lord for several days. We've been waiting on him, and he's poured out his spirit upon us. What we have to give you right now is not money. Such as we have, we have, we have, we give to you. Amen. 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 When I pray for people, I have and I give to you. Yes. Amen? I'm not the healer, but I have. It's, it's working through his church, his people. Amen. I don't know how that happens, but it does. And I believe it. Amen? Such as I have give I you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. Yes. And he got up and walked. And from that moment, he not only got up and walked, but he talked. And he told, you know, they investigated him. And he said, I don't know, I don't know, but, uh, you know, you, you make of this what you will, but I'm walking. Because of it, Peter and John had a good opportunity to go to jail for a few days and, and be released from jail, not by the jailer, but by an angel of the Lord who opened the prison doors. Amen? Mm -hmm. And those men went back out on the street and they were told not to preach or teach in the name of Jesus. And guess what they did? Did it anyway. They did it anywho. Yep. Amen. Number three, the Holy Spirit is needed to restore generations. Mm. Wow. Acts chapter 2, verse 40. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. 
What more do you need? Amen? If the generation was perverse then, imagine how perverse it is today. Amen? Be saved from this perverse generation. People have got to be saved from something. Amen? If you don't have anything to be saved from, you're, you're not going to get saved. Amen? Amen. If, you, if you'd have looked at my life before I got saved, you'd have said, what did, what did you need to get saved from? I needed to get saved from me. And when I saw how bad that was, see, the Holy Spirit came and showed me how bad my sin was which made me run to Jesus. Amen. And run into his arms. Verse 31. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000. That means quite a few generations got saved that day. Quite a few. Amen. If there were 3,000 people there, because there were men, there were women, and there were children, and, and, you know, you may look at that number and say, how did that happen? 3,000 in one day. I've never seen an altar call with 3,000. All I can say is get ready. Get ready. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and if you, you think you, you're not going to see it, you need to read this again and heed this. Verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the, in the apostles' doctrine. In other words, what the apostles taught, which they thought was very, very good, not very bad, and thought they had a better idea and could do church without the Holy Spirit. Amen? And because of it, they had fellowship, it says. They came together, all right? Now, when they come together, guess what? 3,000 people are going to turn into how many thousand? You all know it. And the breaking of bread and in prayers, amen? They prayed together. They ate together. Amen? They cried out to God together. They hurt together. They, they saw the answers to prayer together. Amen? It's not good to be out on your own. Somebody say hallelujah or something. Amen. Amen. Verse 43, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Welcoming in the Holy Spirit opens the door for signs and wonders. Truly opening the door. Not limiting him. Not saying you can do this, but you can't do that. Because you're afraid a few people in the back are going <coughs> to wag their tongues and say, well, that was, I don't believe that. Well, you know what? Too bad. Too bad. Amen? Well, let me ask you that question again. Just seeing generations restored. Who wouldn't want that? Yeah. Amen? Well, the ones in the back that don't want the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> for, number four. The Holy Spirit is needed for the restoring of the fear of the Lord. Amen? And I'll, I'll finish with this. Uh, we, need the spirit, we need the fear of God restored in our land. We do. Amen. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord uh, causes you not to sin. I mean, there's so many things, all right? Acts 2.43 says this. The, the result of the moving of the Spirit was not a lightness about sin. Uh, the moving of the Holy Spirit was not a misinterpretation of, you know, God's Demand for us not to sin. It says, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. That's not socialism. That's, uh, I volunteer to sell my goods because you have a need. Amen? It's a lot different then the government come in after you yeah. saying, no, you give it to us and we'll make sure to give it to those that are hurting. Mm -hmm. And if you believe that one, uh, we've got some property in Florida that we would like to sell you right next to Miami that's just choice property with alligators and <laughs> everything, okay? You know, it says they sold their possessions, divided them among all as anyone had need. And the Bible says that they, they actually put it at the feet of the 
apostles, and the apostles distributed it. Verse 46, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple, there they are, they're coming together, right? In the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. You know, they were serious about their eating, too. And about eating together. You know, we talked about having a, a barbecue, you know, but uh, and this is not to push a barbecue, believe me. But, you know, there's something to coming together and eating together and being, being one accord. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity, simplicity of heart. Beloved, our hearts need to be simple in these last days. We don't need to make it complicated. We don't have to overthink things. Amen. Look clearly at the word. Understand. To have a simple heart is to have a heart that's resting on the Lord and understanding his ways. Verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily who were being saved. I've learned one thing. Amen. And that is that God's people will begin to have favor when God's people do what God's people are supposed to do. A lot of times the people in the world read the church and understand that this is where the power should be coming from. You know, how many of you before you were saved had the opinion at least that in church something should be happening? People shouldn't be falling asleep. I mean, I had that opinion. When, when I went to church the first time, I expected to see power. Well, the Lord took me up on that. And believe me, I saw power. And I, you know, being a, a Catholic, <laughs> when I saw the power of God move, I wanted to make a door in the wall and run out, you know, because I couldn't get out. And, 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 you know, it took a little conditioning, all right? But, uh, you know, this is what God's doing. He's going to add to the church daily those who are being saved. As we allow the Spirit of God. That's why uh, when we emphasize Pentecost, even if we say we're Pentecostal, there's something more to that than just, you know, showing a gift or whatever. It is showing the power, the manifest power of Almighty God. Praise His name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question, and you know what I'm going to ask. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want the fear of the Lord? I'll tell you who wouldn't want the fear of the Lord, those who want to live in sin. Because the fear of the Lord, amen, speaks and prevents us from living in sin. Amen? I'm going to read that verse to you. This is uh, my last verse here, Proverbs 8, 13. Uh, we have a need for the restoring of the Spirit of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit will help in that. Amen? Verse Proverbs 8.13 says this, The fear of the Lord, do that, is because in these verses, God is going to make it, make it sound like uh, wisdom and the fear of the Lord is actually doing the talking. So the fear of the Lord, he's going to make it like it, the fear of the Lord is actually a person. Speaking and talking and telling you how the fear of the Lord actually feels towards sin. I, I kind of think that's cool. Anyway, here's what it says. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way. Praise God. So there is nothing wrong with speaking out against evil ways. All right? Nothing wrong with it. It's not unloving to do that. It is loving. Because if you care about people that are uh, involved in the things that people are involved in, the deep paganism that we see in our lifetime, then it is a, it's a noble thing to speak against evil. And this is, listen to this, next verse. And the perverse mouth I hate. Who's doing the talking? It's, it's, not they, it's not the writer of Solomon, the writer of Proverbs. He's not doing the talking. It, it's, it's hate. Uh, hating, and it's the fear of the Lord that's doing the talking. And he says this. Mr. Fear of the Lord says this. Counsel is mind, and sound wisdom 
The fear of the Lord says, I am understanding. I have strength. The fear of the Lord says in verse 15, By me kings reign, and rulers decree justice. And the fear of the Lord says, By me princes rule, and nobles, and all the judges of the earth. By the fear of the Lord. And then the fear of the Lord says in verse 17, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. How do, you, how, do you, how do you search the fear for the fear of the Lord? How do you search for that? By allowing the Holy Spirit free reign in your life. Complete reign. When you get on with God, you speak to God and believe Him and expect Him that he will move through you with the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to ask you another question. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want all of these things? Amen? And if the church doesn't want them, then we're in a heap of trouble. Amen? Amen. But God wants his people. This is what I'm saying. God wants his people to come together. And, and he doesn't want us to be the attitude, well, you don't have to, you know, you're not, you don't practice the gifts of the Holy Spirit or whatever, so I don't like you or whatever, not that kind of attitude at all. But we've got, at, at least we who know the power of the Holy Spirit have got to manifest it in a way where, God, where God's people will look at that and say, I want that. I want that for myself. I want that for my life. I want that for my children. I want these promises that Joel made to fall on my children. I want generations healed in Jesus' name. I want people healed. I want to see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, like the book of Acts, and even greater things that, the, that Jesus promised in the last days to us. He said, greater things, greater things will you do in my name. In my name. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who wouldn't want that? Do you want that? Amen. I do. Amen? Do you want... But let me ask you this question. This is a big question. Do you want the church to have it? Not this... You know, this church, we're... <laughs> we move that way. But do you want the churches to have that? Yeah. Will you pray? Will you cry out to God? The Bible says that, that He does things when the church cries out to Him night and day. Amen? Now I'm going to ask you... Right now, as we stand together, I want to all stand together. Right now.